second of the weekly updates on my summer language learning sprint. What I'm doing is trying to do an hour's work on my basic beginner's Japanese and an hour's work on my intermediate Basque. For four weeks I have some time off work so there's a lot more flexibility during these four weeks. And I reported back last week how the first week has gone. Well, this week, I want to tell you more about what's been going on, what my experiences have been, and a couple of takeaways. First of all, though, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Gareth Popkins. Here we're all about language learning from many angles, methods, advice, interviews, and vlogs. And you can get my free webinar training by following the link underneath this video. First, let's just kick off with some totals. I'm supposed to do five hours in each language this last week. I did five hours Japanese, but with Basque, I'm afraid it was only four hours, ten minutes. And I'll explain why I fell short on the Basque in a moment. But at least I am still on target for the month as a whole, because I should be at ten hours for both languages at the end of the second week. Actually, I'm on ten hours, fifteen minutes for Japanese, because in this last week on one day, I did fifteen minutes extra Jap. Uh, and on the Basque, I'm on 10 hours 50 because I did extra Basque one day during week one. So a bit, a bit of real room there in that sense. Why did I only do 10 minutes Basque one day during this week? Well, it was because preparation for my Russian webinars, which kicked off on Wednesday, took over. And I was also recording another separate interview for this channel uh, on Tuesday. And I was really glad, therefore, that I got my Japanese in early on Tuesday. One of the takeaways this week for me, again, was something, of course, I know that it's really good if you can get your language study in early in the morning before your life starts to get in the way. That's what I'd done with the Japanese, but with the Basque, as I'll explain, I wasn't able to do extra late in the evening. And so it fell by the wayside. So if you can, if you've got a busy job, family commitments, get up a bit earlier, get it in before the distractions kick. Now, in terms of what I was doing with Basque, one of the mainstays was having one-to-one -one Skype lessons. And I'm trying at the moment to have three 30-minute sessions a week. They happened on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, nicely spaced all early morning sessions, so about 8.30, 9 o'clock, and two of them with my long-standing teacher, Yurati, well, since the beginning of this year at least, and the second new one with Gary, who uh, is quite laid back, he's a slightly older guy, and he's good at doing corrections as well. He even pulled into a Google Doc the first email I'd sent him at the very beginning, proceeded to correct some of my written Basque. So I do like it when a teacher shows a bit of initiative. For all, I'm always saying that we should know what we want from our teachers and be prepared to drive things forward. To have somebody showing the initiative in, you know, in, in a constructive way really was well, very welcome, very welcome. As for Japanese, I was pressing on through my main course book, Japanese from Zero, book two. And interesting new things that came up were, it's all in the final unit because that's where I'd got to at the beginning of last week. Uh, it was things like mata, which means still or yet, and gorai, which means about. So these are sort of time and quantity expressions. And in that context of talking about quantities, we got back to using the counters, which you have to use when you mention different nouns. Are uh, they long, thin objects? Things like flat, ob narrow objects like paper, or are they round objects? You have, or are they years, people, animals, and so on? You have to use these counters. And some of the numbers are different before the counters, particularly one to 10. Now this was introduced actually back in book one of Japanese from Zero, and a bit more was introduced at the beginning of book two, but it hasn't been much practiced at all in the course. And so here it came up again. So of course I was flicking backwards through both volumes, trying to remember these counters. And that really pressed home for me, I think, the truth that you, you know, however well designed a course is, you have to review, you have to get much more input, much more exposure to the words and the structures. You're just not going to remember by working through the course diligently, however diligently, one time. 
And that's one reason by, let's, by why, turning a bit to methods, I'm doing a lot of flashcarding with Japanese from zero, using paper flashcards rather than the Anki uh, spaced repetition system on my phone, because I was fed up of always being on the phone, always looking at a screen. So I've gone back to paper flashcards and I spent a lot of time in the week that's just gone actually making flashcards and sometime <laughs> it felt rather less reviewing them, which of course is what it's all about. Similarly with the Basque, I was using the gold list method. I'll put a link underneath to an article about that if you don't know what it is that I did on the blog a while ago for reviewing Basque vocabulary from one of the Basque courses that I'm using. I was doing quite a lot of reading too, both the conversations and dialogues in Japanese from zero and in my Basque materials, including the Ariane course, which is an upper intermediate course. Actually, I've got, well, I've got the B2.1 book, so an upper intermediate book. But one of the topics I was covering this week was uh, whether it's good to rent or to buy accommodation. So you can imagine quite advanced. There was some vocab I couldn't do, but I got a long way in terms of understanding and working stuff out before I hit the dictionary. And translation as well, uh, into and out of both languages, uh, Japanese from zero expects you to do that with dialogue-based materials, so it's not dry and theoretical sorts of translation. And there are more sort of exercise type translations in the Bakak, Bakarka, advanced book that I'm using for Basque or upper intermediate book. But again, just into Basque, they're a useful discipline, I think, for practicing the grammatical structures. Finally, on Friday, I started book three of Japanese from Zero, so that's very exciting. And I uh, didn't, of course, progress beyond the beginning of unit one, but there were some great new verbs in there that had always already come across in the Pimsleur audio course. So, hataraku uh, for to work, and hanasu uh, to speak. And this is a way, I think, that you can get repetition and recall more than any one course can offer. It's by, you know, having two courses running in parallel, as well as flashcarding and that sort of thing. So it was exciting to start off with the new book. One of the things about the third book is that it introduces, starts teaching Japanese kanji characters. And I had earlier on in my Japanese project in April, really in May, decided not to do any more work on the characters. I've been using Heisig's Remembering the Kanji book. And so there's a bit of a dilemma now as I came to Japanese from Zero, I was sitting there on Friday morning thinking, oh, I'm going to have to start learning these now. This is going to distract me. And I decided that my emphasis was going to be on speaking and listening skills at this stage in the project. But actually, I don't think it's going to be too bad because there are only 60 to 80 characters introduced during uh, Japanese from Zero book three. And I'd done, albeit in a rather perfunctory way, Already I'd done 200 in HiSig of the 2,200 that are in that book. So I don't think it's going to be a really big problem. Uh, but it is something that I think is going to be a major project for next year, learning these kanji characters rather than during the first year, so after my trip to Japan in October. On Wednesday then, I did in the evening the Russian webinar. It all went pretty well, I think. I did a rehearsal session first, then I did the actual webinar. They were both 40 minutes. All went well. Uh, then I stopped Zoom and I realised I hadn't pressed record. So I wanted to upload a recording of the webinar into the course members area. And uh, I had to do the whole, you know, the whole thing again, another 40 minutes. So by now, uh, so that was done anyway, uploaded, edited and uploaded. It was up to half past 10 on Wednesday evening. Now, at that point, I was sorely, and I was still half an hour short on Japanese, I was sorely tempted to call it a day, but I didn't. I did another 30 minutes Japanese, and that's the power of accountability. Basically, I'd already fallen short with the Basque, and I wasn't going to come and tell you guys that that had happened with Japanese as well. Um, that, for me, is an indication of how account finding some sort of accountability partner or audience or whatever it is can help, at least for certain types of people, and I'm certainly one of them. So if you've not tried that, you can just be saying to a friend, I'm going to email you each week and tell you what, whether I've met my targets for work on my language, for example. It can be a good motivational and habit-forming tool, as I say, if you're that sort of person. So there we are. 
The other interesting thing that happened in the week was, yeah, a, a chat with Chris Broholm of Actual Fluency. I interviewed him on Tuesday, another reason why the Basque fell by the wayside, talking about the Polyglot Cruise. You may have seen the video. If not, you can check it out. I'll link underneath to the Cruise page as well, underneath this video. But that went out on Thursday. And I think this coming Thursday, I'm going to do another interview. So look out for, for what's coming up. Then finally, at the end of the week on Friday, I yeah, had started Japanese from Zero Book 3 in the morning. And then I headed off in the afternoon to spend the weekend in Coventry with friends, visiting friends, my first trip to Coventry. On the train, I did some flashcard recall practice with Japanese vocab from Japanese from Zero Book 1 which really felt a useful use of the time on the sort of hour, hour plus train journey to Coventry. And then it was really interesting exploring Coventry for the first time. And it was only this morning when I was thinking about this video that I realized I should have taken some video footage to show you, but maybe we can finish with some photographs of the beautiful modern Coventry Cathedral and the burnt out shell of the old cathedral that was destroyed in the war. And then there was the wonderful Coventry Motor Museum as well. In the 20th century, Coventry was a centre of the largely now defunct British, or at least British-owned, motor industry. And there's also the Herbert Museum in Coventry, which is the local historical museum. It tells you all about local famous daughter, Lady Godiva, from the 11th century, who famously rode through the town naked on a horse. That was an interesting story to be reminded of. And also there's a canal which starts there. This is, there's a canal basin area where you can go and see the long, the long canal boats. So all really interesting and great to get a change of scene after a busy week here at How To Get Fluent Towers. So that's where we are with the Summer Sprint Two Language Tango project so far. How's your language learning going? Have you kept on, on track? Are you someone who likes using accountability or do you find it doesn't actually uh, encourage you to go that extra mile? Let me know about it in the comments below. Look out then for something different on Thursday here on the channel and for the next update next Tuesday. As always, many thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for the vibe, throw me a thumbs up, tickle that bell and share your thing. See you next time. I would.